Welcome to Paintbrush and Ivories, the podcast for artists, curious creatives and art lovers that connects creativity with the heart and soul. I'm Michelle Walker and I'm here with my creative soul sister, Jennifer Ruth Russell. Hey, Jen. Hey, Michelle. How wonderful it is to be here today. I'm so (laughs) grateful. It's lovely to see your face and I do, I know listeners, you don't get the visuals, but Jennifer usually waves at me when we're saying, when we're greeting each other, it's such a delight. So today we want to talk about a topic that's just emerged for me and I think we're sharing it because it's up for both of us. It's just the concept of simplicity, simplicity in our creative expression but also simplicity in life. And I think there's a big crossover. Absolutely. I just want to share with everyone what triggered this for me was finding a poem that was read to me by my year nine English teacher, Mr. Cullody. He loved this poem and it was utterly infectious. And one of the things that resonated for me was its pure simplicity. And I'm going to share it with you. It's called This Is Just a Say. By William Carlos Williams, I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were delicious, so sweet and so cold. I love that poem. And it's one of those funny things that I still remember it and I couldn't find it until just recently. And I'm not even sure what triggered me to go finding, but there it is. And the thing that still sits with me from that year nine girl in English class was just the precision and the exquisite simplicity of that story and the sharing of the emotion. What's your thoughts, Jen? So beautiful, so simple, so visual. Yeah. It allows you to take your own journey. You can almost taste those plums, can't you? Like you can oh, feel absolutely. you can feel them cold on your mouth as you're eating them. And there's something delicious about the kind of I couldn't help myself. You kind of get that totally with those few words. I did go a bit uh, and explore a bit about William Carlos Williams once I found this just recently and found that he was an active poet in the early 1900s and was part of the imagism movement, which was all about the clarity of the words and the crispness of the language that was used to produce incredible visuals in the minds of the listeners. And so I think that's absolutely perfect description of this poem. I love it. Thank you for starting that way. What a beautiful way to talk about simplicity. So when I raised this topic of simplicity, where did you go with it for you and in your art practice and in your life? It is such a core principle. This is like the easiest thing in the world to talk about for me. (laughs) I really want to start with sharing a story. You know, started writing songs when my son was just a wee one. And as I started getting more and more into the the technique of writing songs and, and then my songs always seem to be so simple. And I remember being in inquiry about it and feeling a little inadequate because my songs are very simple. And I had this visual, I I wouldn't say a visual, but a vision that happened to me between wakefulness and sleeping, you know, that time, the magic time. And at the time, Michael and I were working in a lot of hotels that had these magnificent bouquets, right? The flowers were I mean, they were up in the air, they were raised, they were elevated, not only suspended from the ceiling, but some of them in these grand vases that were like 10 feet tall, huge, magnificent bouquets. And I, in this vision, I was walking through this throne room with all these beautiful bouquets around me. And as I was walking, I looked down and I saw in my hand just a small bouquet of poppies And I heard, it is enough. Mm. And it was so profound for me in my songwriting. It was like, I never again felt like I had to do something else, something more, something complicated, something that would be clever. It just cleared it all up for me. Yeah. 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 Oh, (laughs) what a beautiful image. I've always had that, I guess it's a 
a lofty ideal, but there was always this idea as I was going through art college that simplicity was almost the ultimate goal, that if you could take something away and it still be strong, then you needed to do that taking away. You needed to do that removal. And I found Leonardo da Vinci's quote, which is simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. So your 10 foot high vases filled with these outrageous conglomerations of flowers. When you get the bouquet of poppies, the simplicity and the beauty in just that is exactly what I think I'm striving for in my creative pursuits. Absolutely. And you know what? I think too, it's a process of learning something too, because when we start out, we want to put everything in there. We want to put the kitchen sink in there with with the laundry, right? And now it's like, wow, it, it is cutting away. It's like, what is not necessary here? What yeah. is just taking up space? Mm. How about you? Talk a little bit about your creative process and simplicity. Well, I think I'm aware that having learnt lots of different skills and I'm thinking possibly about my painting right now, and I do tend to throw a lot into a painting and it is the kitchen sink, also fondly known as the garage sale painting, where you've got lots going on and really the viewer doesn't have any idea about what to look at because I haven't been clear about it. So that's been a bit of a journey for me because I get enthusiastic and I like lots of things. Like I'm someone who likes lots of colour and I like lots of texture and I like lots of different mark making. And so I can suffer a bit from that liking everything. I am on a bit of a journey about simplicity and I did a series of works at the end of last year, was part of the Mark 180 project and I did four paintings that were very simple in their palette they were mostly black red and white they were fairly simple in their marks although there was a lot beneath the surface some of which is excavated out and I was really enjoying what that got me that simplicity because it's also quite confronting you know it makes me think about being really clear about what it is that I want to say and almost the boldness of some of those artworks can make me feel a little bit unsure of myself. So it's asking me to kind of level up a bit with those marks. And I feel that that's really a beautiful process and journey that I'm on in exploring how little can I do. And I don't mean little as in lazy, I mean little as in simple. I, I, Mm -hmm. You know, this is it. This is the nub Mm -hmm. of it, isn't it? So it's all about the not enoughness and the enoughness. Is that a word? The enoughness? I don't know. (laughs) It is now. It is. You get what I mean. And that, that message that you got, that I am enough, this is enough, is really very interesting because it is all about navigating that journey for me also in my art. Absolutely. I have to say something too here because when I... And it wasn't until later that I was clear about what the core reason for my contribution, my artistry, my songs. When I got clear about what what was my purpose to bring songs in, which is to open the heart, that also became kind of a blue flame for me, that this simplicity goes forth before the blue flame. Is it opening my heart, if it's opening my heart, then it is absolutely going to open up others. And it's it's no mistake that two of my most favored songs are I Am Worthy of My Own Love. Mm-hmm. That's simply the song, I Am Worthy of My Own Love. That's repeated over and over in that song. I'm not too little. I'm not too much. I'm enough just as I am. You know, I'm, I am worthy of my own love. And the other one is the Ho'oponopono prayer chant, which, you know, the Ho'opono prayer is very simple. Yeah, and very powerful. Yeah, the repetition of it is very powerful. Just, I love you. I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Thank you. Mm. Mm. So basic, so simple. It reminds me of something that I've been interested in that I'm, I guess, has been in the bit of the periphery of my art making 
and links what we do in our spiritual practice with our art is this whole endeavor of the Zen art and Hitsu Zendu, which is the, the way of the Zen brush. And I'm interested because I've come across the Enzo circles or the Enzo, I think it means circle in Japanese, but that idea of a meditative state where you empty yourself completely and then you make one move with your brush and the Enzo kind of forms a circle and and the perfectionism and the imperfectionism of that mark is exquisite. It really is the representation of energy in action, which I find absolutely attractive and I want to know more. And it is coming up for me because of this most recent work and my desire to explore. And I think that, you know, this is something you and I share, this intersection between spirituality and creativity. Maybe a um, Japanese ink brush is your next tool <laughs> in your repertoire, Jen. <laughs> oh, that sounds delicious. I mean, I'd love to try the process. Yeah. Because I think it's also called the circle of togetherness. And and I love that, that, uh, that total unity, mm. uh, you know, no separation. It has so many meanings. And I think the, the thing that I find fascinating is that I kind of lent into it because I was interested in the mark making, but the bit of reading and, and uh, information that I've gathered is that really the art, it's not an art practice. It's not another mark making skill set, Michelle. It's actually a spiritual practice. And the art just happens to be produced. Mm. So not an end in itself, but just a, a happy, delightful product of a beautiful process. I love it. The thing that appeals to me, which was, you know, the beginning of last year, I think you and I were chatting and I got the message that to progress my art, I needed to deepen my spiritual practice. And I've been curious and in inquiry, as you would say, about what does that look like? What does that feel like? And what I love about the idea of it is the emptying process that happens because it is about getting out of your own way. Mm -hmm. It's about opening yourself to be a vessel for expression of universal energy, universal truth and wisdom I'm not sure quite what the words are there but that's that sense of universal energy coming through and I'm interested in how that ties back to my love of nature and how I want to express my love of nature and how is that connected so I'm in that not knowing uh, liminal space what a beautiful space to be in yeah it's, it's very rich and creative <laughs> It is, and it's it's very humbling. Yeah, uh, you know, it, it keeps keeps you in that place of simple inquiry and emptying your mind and receiving what comes in. To me, is beautiful part of simplicity, allowing it to be what it is, you mm -hmm. know. And because uh, I think so much creative process can be very critical if you're not coming from that place. So it seems like you always need to come back to this place of simplicity in order to really create something juicy for yourself. Because if it's juicy for you, everybody else is gonna love it, right? But if you start with like, I gotta make this thing that's better than anyone else's, that's has a huge message, it's gonna change the world, that you know, putting all this heavy, big stuff on our creativity I have found it's not helpful. <laughs> yeah. But being in that empty space and being in that in the stillness and just listening. Someone taught me to listen for the melody because it always comes from within you. It's not something that you have to go out and catch anywhere, but that you will naturally have the most beautiful melody. And that's very simple. That takes that place of just simply listening and just allowing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I got a, another great quote I want to share because it's something that also strikes a chord with me in my practice, but also with the topic that we're talking about. And it's a quote from Philip Guston, who is, who was, he's passed now in 1980, I think he died. He was a artist, a muralist, 
American Canadian. And he said, when you're in the studio painting, there's lots of people in there with you, your teachers, your friends, painters from history, people who critique your work. And one by one, if you're painting, if you're really painting, they walk out. And if you're really painting, <laughs> you walk out. <laughs> and I thought that is just perfect because it's that it's that emptying, isn't it? It's that process of, of not being in the thinking mind and being in the in the liminal space of of pure creativity. Mm -hmm. Yes, and that's when time starts to just dissolve too. And I yep. I love that. You know, we go, what do you mean I've been in here two and a half, three yeah. hours? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's, it's just truly delicious. It is. Any other thoughts about simplicity and how it plays out in your creativity and your life, Jen? You know, right now, and I think this is this has happened to me in the last maybe two years, is that I always follow simplicity with doability, you know, keep it simple and keep it doable. Um, because to me, if an idea is too complicated, I'm going to get discouraged on it and I'm not going to follow it through. So anything that I do needs to be very simple and doable. If I think too far in the future, I'm going to get in that place of constriction. And if I get too much into that place of like, it has to be this or that, it, it doesn't become doable either. So I almost think these two words go together, simplicity and doability. If it's, mm -hmm. if it's simple, I can do it. If I can do it, that feels really good to me. <laughs> Absolutely. And I, I find it interesting because I love those two words. And that really resonates because I think it's about taking care of the time, my creative time and being very protective of it as well. That when complexity happens, it's much more, I'm much more likely to have my neuro fried and for me to not want to pursue it because of the implications of what it means you know having something really got to happen a certain way and it's you know and maybe I'm bringing that to the story or maybe someone else is bringing that to the story that I really do resist because I know that ultimately I want to spend more time in the studio I can let my time get frittered away if I allow it because there's lots of frittering can happen. I am so <laughs> reluctant to do that. And I'm so, I'm actually a lot better at not doing it. I've got very, very clear. And, you know, I still manage to do a bit of domestics now and then. But, you know, there's lots of things that I can just say, well, that's not important. Or, you know, <laughs> that that's actually very clear for me these days. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Absolutely. You know, I want to say something else, and you are a master at this, of when you talk about Marx, and you taught us that in Spirit Art School, which is just fascinating. Here's some possibilities of Marx that you can make, and they're just very simple. They're very clear, but as a non-visual artist, which I won't say that's who I am, but as a learning artist, it always is wonderful to have somebody say, here's some possibilities. And you know what else? I'm going to translate that into music because the triad, you know, do, mi, so, da, 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 that's a triad. That is the most simplest and strongest shape in music. And we hear it everywhere. And I love jazz. Okay. And jazz sounds complicated, but when you break it down, it's just different triads on top of each other or underneath each other or just transposed in a certain way. But it really is still very simple. At least it has to be for me in order for me to execute it. I have to understand it. And thank God I have pictures that come up in my mind when I'm sitting down at the piano. I see pictures. I see all of a sudden, you know, a beautiful field with some sprinkles of, of rain on top. You know, I see things like that or I see, I see shapes that I can play. And that becomes like an open door for me of mm. simplicity. If it's not simple and there's no open door for me, it gets in that place of jumbled thinking. Yeah. As that's that's the best as I that I can explain it. I love hearing that. 
And it's interesting because you talk about triads in music in terms of notes, but I immediately think about triads in terms of palette because we use triads and I use triads a lot in my choice of palettes. So I think that there is this absolute um, beauty where, like jazz, where you can just layer the different um, notes together. I can take three basic colours and then just add mix them together and add mix bit of white, bit of black or whatever I'm using. And you get this absolute possibility. So for me in art, and I know this is a theme that we talk about in visual art, where we accept the constraint or we accept some boundaries in order to be able to be super creative because the possibilities of a blank canvas can be overwhelming. And in a way, the simplicity of choice, like you've chosen those three notes, I choose three colours to start with, that can be very freeing and that can actually Mm -hmm. open the door to a whole lot of expression. And I really like that. And I think more and more in my life, I think about it, like I think about where the complexity is and how that can be a real churn for my attention and my energies. And that's not necessarily what I choose. So I'm starting to look at that and step back where I can. And I'm mindful that I say that and I'm into bits of technology and I'm into, you know, the latest iPhone and whatever. But I do find it interesting to have this almost an overview around the simplicity. And I love your doability edition because that for me really works. And I do think of that is that it's very much coming from who I am and I I try and let go of the distractions and I try and let go of the things that might get in the way when I come to my creative expression. Beautiful. I so adore listening to your stories about music making because I just find it, it draws me in. I don't have the knowledge of it, but I love your expression of it is so simple. It's so accessible for me, who's not a musician. Mm. So thank you for that. You're welcome. And, you know, I want to just uh, add on to what you were just saying, because as we're talking about the triad, it sounds very innocent in its, in its simplicity. But also, as you are working with three colors in music, you could be playing this beautiful, just very simple melody in a key. And all of a sudden, it's like, da, 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 you go somewhere so different that it's like putting a total splash color that has nothing to do with your triads, right? And it perks the ear. It's like, oh, where are we going now? You know, we're going somewhere new. You know, this is going to be exciting. Contrast. (laughs) I love contrast. And I think contrast is such a core aspect to visual design, but obviously it's a transferable idea across many creative expressions so I I love the way you just demonstrated that auditorily is that the right word in in my ears and that is essentially what I try and do with my visual expression is you put harmony harmony unity unity and then contrast and that's the thing that's really going to speak to people perhaps first have the loudest sort of impact on people and Mm. catch their attention in a painting mm-hmm. when we're talking yeah. 2D simplicity. <laughs> it's something to, it's really something to embrace and to also continually strive for, isn't it? It's never, it's never a je- destination, always a journey. Absolutely. Mm. Well, thank you for joining me on this wonderful conversation around simplicity and doability. Mm. My joy. And letting me share my I've eaten the plums poem. I can't tell you the joy that I found in my heart when I reconnected with that poem because it was such an incredible memory and I just love that this has sort of followed us on a journey to talk about simplicity which happens to be up for both of us right now. Absolutely it's always up for me Mm. and you know what I would really like it if you would read that poem to us once again as we're we're leaving. I'd love to. It's a poem called This Is Just A Say by William Carlos Williams. I have eaten the plums that were in the icebox and which you were probably saving for breakfast. Forgive me, they were delicious. So sweet and so cold. (laughs) All right, everyone. (laughs) All right, Michelle, thank you so much. 
Thank you, Jen. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. Love you crazy. Bye for now. Bye.